Learning objectives include what lies in the cytoplasm, and those structures that lie in the cytoplasm include nuclei, ribosomes, inclusions. So basically, anything that is contained within the cytoplasm uh, that include uh, most of it is water, 80%, and as I mentioned earlier, nuclei, ribosomes, and inclusions. And please remember that. In prokaryotes, there is no cytoskeleton and there is no streaming. Cytoskeleton is present in eukaryotic cells. Uh, <clears throat> cyto means cell and skeleton means skeleton. Uh, basically, it is, these are not bones. Um, cytoskeleton means that there are fibers uh, made up of uh, very fine threads that support the cells and maintain the shape of the cell. because in prokaryotes, the shape is maintained by the cell wall, so there is no need for these cytoskeletons. And uh, streaming also occurs because of the cytoskeleton. So as there, are, there is no cytoskeleton present, there is no streaming in prokaryotes. Nucleoid is a nucleus-like structure here, which contains the DNA, of course. The, the DNA in prokaryotes mostly circular, double-stranded DNA. There is no nuclear membrane, and there are no histones. Histones are proteins that basically are present in eukaryotic cells because eukaryotic cells have lots of DNA, and, and that lots of DNA has to be packaged in a small space. Histones are needed to tackle that large or huge size of the DNA because compared with the eukary eukaryotic cells, uh, prokaryotic DNA is not much. So those proteins are not really needed. But it does not really mean that there are no, no uh, proteins uh, that are associated with the DNA in prokaryotes. There are, but they are called non-histones proteins. Also to be noted is that the chromosomes is attached to the plasma membrane, although not shown in this picture here. But this nucleoid, which is the chromosome here, it is attached to the inside of the cell membrane. There is, although not shown in this picture, there is another uh, extra chromosomal DNA, what we call plasmid. If you could see uh, in some of the pictures uh, in your book, like in Tartora book that we uh, uh, study for this course, you would see um, a circular DNA lying here. Those copies may be 1, 2, 10, 50, 200. And that is extra chrom chromosomal DNA, not needed for the bacterium, strictly not needed. But if it is there, it has some advantages for the bacterium. Bacteria usually keep genes that the bacteria needs for antibiotic resistance, for example, because these genes are needed larger uh, in number to tackle with the antibiotic. So if those genes are present on the chromosomal DNA, it, the, the DNA size would get increased. And that is not a very good thing for the bacteria to handle. So it places those extra genes on the plasmid. Another component in the cytoplasm of the prokaryotes is ribosomes. Uh, ribosomes are made up of proteins and also RNA. And RNA in, ribosomal, uh, in ribosomes is called ribosomal RNA. Ribosomes basically consist of two subunits. Small unit, there's a small subunit, there's a large subunit. When these two combine, they make a complete ribosome. Also written on this small subunit is 30S, and then there is a 50S. This S is a unit of measurement called Swedberg. When these components are centrifuged, they settle according to the, their weights and size and density. And that unit which is used to express their weight, density, and size, is called Swedberg. It, was, it is the name of a scientist who invented this technique. So he named uh, the unit of measurement after his own name, Swedberg, which is S for Swedberg. If you combine these two together, the molecular weight does not really add up. Uh, as it says, 50 plus 30, the weight should be 80, but it is 70. It is because when these two subunits are combined, their combined molecular weight or weight or density and all that is not equal 
to 80, it is equal to 70. And that is the reason ribosomal, uh, ribosomes are called in bacteria, in, in, eukary- uh, in, sorry, in prokaryotes, they are called 70S ribosomes. But if you split the units, each unit weighs differently. The smaller subunit weighs 30S and large subunit has 50S. Several antibiotics act on these ribosomes and inhibit protein synthesis. So this is a target for many antibacterial or antibiotics that are used for the prevention of diseases. Streptomycin is one of them. It attaches to 30S and blocks the synthesis of proteins. So if the proteins are not synthesized by the bacterium, bacteria would not be able to replicate. Another substance present in the cytoplasm is inclusions. Inclusions basically uh, are reserve deposit of nutrients. Um, anytime the nutrients are abundant in the surrounding of the bacteria or in the medium where the bacterium is living, bacteria um, gets those nutrients, but then it keeps them as reserves. So as these substances uh, act as solute, so they definitely would exert osmotic pressure. And if osmotic pressure gets increased, it would draw more water. And more water means that the bacteria would swell up and it would burst. So in order to avoid that uh, osmotic pressure, increase in osmotic pressure, uh, these are contained or concentrated in small packs or packages. These include metachromatic granules, polysaccharide granules, lipid inclusions, sulfur granules, etc., etc. Now, let's talk about metachromatic granules. Basically, uh, they're also called volutins. These are large inclusions, and they could be stained with methylene blue. Basically, this is inorganic phosphate. And Corine bacterium diphtheriae contains them, and it is also used, their presence, uh, these metachromatic granules, could be demonstrated in this bacterium, Corine bacterium diphtheriae, right here. You could see them. This is the dot shaped bacterium, but these inclusion bodies, uh, although they, they look slightly purplish, but they have a red tinge. Uh, they're stained with methylene blue out here. Another inclusion is a gas vacuole. Gas vacuoles, bacteria accumulate uh, vacuoles, or uh, it traps different gases inside. If a bacterium is swimming in a stream of water, and of course, in the water, nutrients would be present at certain level. So in order to keep uh, the bacteria uh, at, a, at a level, the bacteria accumulates air, gases or air or, or different gases which enable the bacteria to swim at certain level. This is called a buoyancy. And bacteria does it for obtaining nutrients, oxygen, or even for light. Another inclusion body is magnetosomes. These are iron oxide deposits. They are surrounded by plasma membrane imaginations, and they're also the present only in gram-negative bacteria. They serve two purposes here. They can act like a magnet, so the bacteria can attach themselves to the rocks that have iron in them or more contents of iron. So this, uh, these magnets could be used for attachment of the bacterium, and also these bacteria are able to decompose hydrogen peroxide. In summary, the cytoplasm contains bacterial chromosome. It has extra chromosomal DNA as plasmid, ribosomes, and inclusion bodies that include uh, metachromatic granules, gas vacuoles, and magnetosomes, uh, etc., etc.